Restoring Old Steam Toys Part 3 A Mamod TE1 Steam Tractor Repair Fixing problems and cleaning the engine including using an ultrasonic cleaner At the moment I'm cleaning the level plug that fits in the back of the boiler and to do this I'm using a rotary wire brush in my Proxon motor tool After a while it is a lot cleaner than it was but I don't want the parts to look new as this is definitely a vintage steam toy I am making some limited concessions to modernity, for instance I am using a silicone rubber o-ring to make the water level plug steam tight. As I have just mentioned this is a very old engine and as such has some rust problems. And in this close up you can clearly see how dirty the flywheel is. I will remove all this dirt and grime and some of the rust later. This is the piston and connecting rod in my hand. And as you can see, it's not only rusty, it's badly tarnished. So just like I did with the safety valve, I put it in the lathe chuck, spun it and cleaned it using some Scotsbrite. Now it's clean, I think the piston and rod, which is very visible on this engine, looks a whole lot better. Or at least it did until I removed it. What I need to do is dismantle the mechanism because it's not working properly. Over the years, this reversing lever has become sprained and what I need to do is unsprain it and I can't really show that in the video it's a bit of bending and a bit of manipulation just to square it up but first of all I have to remove it to do this this is an oscillating cylinder engine because the cylinder oscillates on the port face which admits and exhausts the steam very clever, very simple in this clip I'm cleaning up the port face of the cylinder using some 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper and here I'm using a smaller bit of sandpaper to do the same on the port face on the engine. What I should have done really is wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a piece of wood to keep it square, but after all these years I can keep it square with my thumb. Here I've reassembled the parts, I'm about to fit the piston and then oil everything, followed by giving the engine a test run. As you can clearly see and hear, the engine runs a lot better, much smoother. It runs better at high speed and at low speed, and it also gives more power. One problem that I've found with Mamods is that owing to abuse by the users, the port face gets bent, and particularly the lever that attaches to the port face allows quite a lot of leverage to be put on this very critical area. Once again, I haven't shown it in the video, I don't like to show some operations because people might think, oh that looks easy, I'll try it, and then they wreck the engine. I've manually straightened the port face using an adjustable spanner. But you need a touch like a midwife to do this, it's a very minor adjustment, so I don't recommend doing it. When in doubt, leave it out. This clip is of course running in slow motion. Once the newly lapped cylinder and port face run in, or bed in, or break in, or whatever you want to call it, it should run better. This is another clip showing how dirty the engine is, just so you can compare with later on in the video. In this clip I'm trying to point out that the port face looks a lot shinier after very little running. I did not clean the parts before I reassembled them. So some of the grit from the sandpaper actually helped to lap both of the parts together perfectly. Running is much improved. Now for the cleaning operation. This is my digital ultrasonic cleaner and I'm going to use this stuff very important not to use the wrong liquids. This is EP24R and it's aluminium safe. In a previous video to see what happened, I used a corrosive ultrasonic cleaning liquid on an old Mamod steam engine. And the results were not good, it started to dissolve the flywheel. But in this case that isn't going to happen for two reasons. One is this EP24R liquid is aluminium safe and I'm using a very dilute solution of the liquid in the water. This is a 15 litre tank. 
If I make the concentration of the liquid too strong it will start to remove the paint and I don't want it to do this. Although sometimes I do and it's very useful. Also I only put the engine into the ultrasonic cleaner for about 5 minutes. Which was just enough to blast away all of the grime. Some of the liquid went inside the boiler and when I emptied the tank I noticed quite a lot of lime scale in the bottom of the tank. That's a good thing because I think it descaled the boiler at the same time. You can see here that it is a lot cleaner. Yes, the paint is still chipped, but once again, it's a very old model. I've seen on a few TV programs that if you use aluminium foil, then you can clean up chrome parts. When I tried it on this engine, it didn't work at all. The chrome was quite rusty, and the only thing that really worked was Scotch-Brite. I removed the small flywheel so I could get into the corners. This Scotch Brite, which is an abrasive scouring pad type of thing, removed most of the rust. I finished off the job with a dry cloth, and I think it looks okay now. Time to refit the flywheel and adjust the end float, and here it is. If you have too much end float on the crankshaft, then the engine knocks. If you have too little, then it binds. You have to get this clearance just right. As you can see in this clip, it is starting to look a lot better. I will be touching in some of the paintwork, but that will be the last job. All I can do now is wait until the new parts arrive. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.